So in this video I want to talk to you about some disadvantages and some limitations of focus groups. Uh, this is not to say that I'm trying to discourage you from using this method, even if the title of the video suggests that that's what I'm trying to do. At the time of recording this video I still didn't know what the title of the video will be, but knowing myself I just figured it's probably going to end up being something quite dramatic. So I'm not trying to discourage you from using focus groups. Uh, focus groups can be an extremely effective method in either academic research or market research. Uh, however, you need to be sure that uh, focus groups really suit your study and the goals and the population in your study. So now let's talk about eight limitations and weaknesses of focus groups. So number one, some groups just will not talk to each other. This can be a serious problem. So is, if this little thing goes wrong, the whole method goes wrong. Your data, your findings, your study uh, goes wrong. So of course, uh, when using a method that relies precisely on communication between the participants with the minimum input from the researcher, this can be a, a risky situation. As a researcher, and I'll come back to it uh, when discussing uh, the other points in this video, you're not really supposed to talk to your uh, focus group participants too much. You're a moderator, you're not an, an interviewer, so you're not talking to them or talking with them. You're a moderator, so you're gently guiding the discussion. But the whole point is for them to discuss uh, things uh, within the focus group. So. Uh, so if you come across such group, you can't really, you can't really encourage them that much uh, to talk. And there may be many different reasons why they won't talk. They may not be talkative or most likely uh, the structure of the group is not uh, very well uh, thought through. So you can have participants who don't get along or maybe participants who don't feel comfortable around each other. There can be hundreds of reasons why they, they don't talk, but like I said, this is definitely a number one concern and something to really uh, plan carefully to make sure that they do talk. Number two is meaning attribution. Meaning attribution or in other words uh, the notion that uh, all of us, everybody uh, perceives and understands and defines things in, in their own way. So uh, this can be, uh, of course this is true for any kind of research, for any kind of social interaction in general. Uh, but again, if you are, this is particularly worth considering if you're investigating some uh, complex topics. So if uh, these meanings are complex in themselves, so if you're investigating identity or, you know, identity construction, negotiation or self-esteem, uh, notions and, and terms that uh, are not that easy to define and understand sometimes, this can be a problem. Uh, some people uh, suggest that uh, you can solve this problem by simply defining the terms at the beginning of the focus groups, of the fo focus group discussion. But then this generates another problem, namely that the whole point of focus group uh, of focus group discussion is to understand how participants, how the participants understand and define the world around them. So if you define, if you provide definitions for them. Uh, one could argue that you have already influenced, to some extent, uh, the results of your study. And this kind of leads us to the problem, the issue of moderator bias, which is very similar to interviewer bias. So you may be familiar with this idea. And uh, so whether you did intentionally or not, uh, you as a moderator may influence what the participants say or how they say it. So. Uh, you may either be asking wrong questions, so you may be just like in interviews, again, you may be asking leading questions that uh, seem to suggest uh, the, the correct answer, or maybe it's not even your fault, but uh, the participants may still uh, feel like they need to ex uh, express uh, opinions that will please you, or they may worry uh, to express opinions which they, they may think you don't agree with. Like I said, there could be many uh, reasons why this uh, this problem manifests itself. But what you can do as a researcher, of course, is to plan your questions very carefully. So just like you would do in, when developing an interview guide. So just to make sure that you definitely do not influence the responses. You don't lead them into any, any particular conclusions. 
And this again relates to my next point, namely various theories of social interaction. Uh, the first ones that come to my mind uh, are the theory of social impact, for example, which holds that, uh, in general, individual effort decreases in a group. So uh, when you are in a group, you don't feel like uh, you are not bothered, uh, basically because uh, perhaps there are people who will do the work for you, so you may not feel like expressing your opinions or engaging in the discussion. Uh, there are many other theories. Another one is face-saving theory. You may have uh, heard about it. Uh, so basically, uh, it means that people uh, try to save face. They worry about what other people think about them. They may try to save face. So. Uh, influence the other people's perceptions of them by, for example, not expressing controversial views or views that they believe to be controversial. And another possible limitation involves the notion of groupthink or a phenomenon in which uh, members of a group tend to feel the pressure to conform uh, to the ideas expressed in that group. So again, they may not really be expressing their own views, they may feel like they need to, uh, they need to agree with the whole group. So this group thing, as a result, uh, the whole group generates some kind of uh, ideas and beliefs, but they don't always necessarily reflect uh, all the individual members' uh, points of view. Another problem and something again that has been uh, evident in the previous points that I made is generally the problem of dishonest responses. So the group thing uh, usually relates to uh, a more subconscious level, so as I said, this whole group generates uh, this this common view, uh, but it's not always a conscious effort of, of the individual group members. But uh, of course you may have group members uh, that are not honest, they are not expressing their honest opinions. opinions. Again, they may feel the pressure, they may feel, uh, they may uh, be embarrassed or they for any reason they may not want to share their real ideas so you can imagine if uh, you can imagine easily that there are topics which perhaps you would not want to discuss in a group so perhaps you would tell uh, these things to uh, an in individual interviewer but perhaps you're not uh, comfortable discussing these things in a group so so i guess as researchers again we really need to think about the structure of our group as well as the topic of our our study because there is there is no uh, one uh, straightforward answer as to for example what kind of topics are good for focus groups and what kind of topics are not good because if you think for example about some controversial topic or, or some traumatic events or or any any negative experiences like that on the one hand you can argue that uh, perhaps it's better to express these views uh, face to face in an individual interview but then on the other hand you have an argument that uh, people feel comfortable around other people who shared this kind of experiences so they may actually be encouraged to share their experience in a group so like I said there is no uh, one answer as to what uh, constitutes a good topic for a focus group discussion but again you really need to uh, think about it, you need to be aware of, of the sensitive issues that you're aiming to address in your study and you need to have a good understanding of your, of your potential group, of your potential participants to make a very well informed decision as to whether it would be perhaps better uh, to interview them individually or to have this focus group discussion. And the next problem uh, relates to the so-called squeaky wheels or in our case a small and vocal group of participants. I'm not sure if you've ever conducted a focus group uh, discussion or maybe participated in one as a participant but if you have then you'll know that there are, usually there are a couple of people that are more active uh, than the other. So firstly, of course, you can have introverts and extroverts. Then uh, quite often in studies where uh, the participants have uh, mixed language ability. So for example, you have non-native and native English speakers. Uh, in that case, quite often the native English speakers tend to be those more vocal ones. Uh, in addition to having uh, this one person, for example, or two people that are more, more vocal, usually they start to form a group. So they start to discuss things among themselves and at the same time the uh, the quiet ones uh, they don't really ex express their views that much uh, which means of course uh, again the whole idea of a focus group discussion is to generate data that represents ideally the views of the group 
because then you can analyze it and make claims based on that analysis. But if you have uh, these squeaky wheels or you know the loud, <laughs> the loud uh, participants, uh, and you based later on you analyze these responses, so you base your analysis on on the views of a couple of people, then of course uh, this affects your study and your findings because your claims and what you found uh, does not necessarily reflect and represent the views of the whole group. Again, uh, in terms of avoiding that situation, of course there are so many things that can go wrong, but you can uh, kind of plan uh, your role in this discussion. As I said, you need to moderate the discussion uh, skillfully. Uh, perhaps, uh, if possible, again, understand the population, the participants, uh, see uh, see who they are and see whether there is a chance that there will be these dominant speak uh, speakers. And uh, so I guess just plan and try to imagine the different scenarios and what may, may possibly go wrong. And finally, uh, it's not really a disadvantage, but it's something to consider. Uh, focus groups tend to uh, involve a lot of effort and time and sometimes to cost a lot of money if you have to buy equipment or even borrow equipment. In terms of uh, time and effort, of course, it's more difficult to to arrange uh, a discussion. So to arrange a time and date, for example, uh, with all these people rather than individual participants, then you have to organize the room, make sure everything is set up and make sure that you record everything. So. In terms of the analysis and transcription in particular, of course, it's much more uh, demanding and difficult as well. But like I said, it's not really a disadvantage. It's if you feel that uh, focus groups are definitely uh, suitable for your study, I would say that this is uh, the, the, the least of your concerns is that it involves a lot of effort. I hope that you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you did, please like the video to help it get found on YouTube. Also, don't hesitate to ask me questions in the comments. Uh, finally, if you feel like you need more assistance, if you're maybe planning your focus groups or you're planning to analyze your focus group data and you don't know how, uh, do not hesitate to reach out through my website. The link is in the description and we'll arrange a one-to-one -one tutorial.